Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, those of you who come to both services, the 930 and the 1010, know that I usually don't do the same talk, you know, uh, for both services. And there's a lot of reasons for this. One is that if you make the effort to come twice, I should make the effort to give you two different talks, you know. I mean, you know, it should be a bonus. I, I shouldn't punish the people for coming twice, right? Uh, uh, and, uh, well, I, I mention this because sometimes, you know, if I, one service you hear a lot of laughing and stuff like that and you come in and you wonder what the heck is going on. This isn't funny or anything like that. You know, I just wanted to explain. But, uh, you know, I, I will sometimes base it on the same concept and develop it from there. Other times I'll talk completely about something different. But today, uh, for the 930 Dharma School service, I talked about the difference between needs and wants. You know, and I had them come up with things that they need. And basically they came up with the right ones, you know, food, air, uh, water, you know, shelter. And then, you know, we did talk, talked a little bit about the need for our friends and family. And then we talked about wants, and we had a whole list of those things. And then we started talking about some of the things that have fallen between, you know, like uh, education. You know, you, given the success, a certain setting, it's a need. You know, but you know, if you have a different setting, it may not be a need. And then we started talking about uh, the need for, uh, you know, where do we put church and religion in that framework of needs and wants. And uh, the, some of the kids said it was a want. Then I asked if they wanted to be here, and they were honest and said no. Uh, but, you know, it, it's something that we may end up needing later, right? End up needing later. And uh, by having that preparation ahead of time, it's you have it when you do need it. It's, it's like a crutch, right? It's like a crutch. Uh, if you have a crutch and you're walking around and you don't need it, it's just, it's just a bother a lot of times, you know, because if you don't need it, it's, there's not much sense having it. But when you do need it, rather than having to go look around for it, you know, if you have an accident or something like that, and you, or you, you just start getting sore legs and knees and, you know, just f tired all over, if you have it and you know where it is, you know, it's, it's right there. You don't have to start searching for it. You don't have to run around looking for it. It's there when you need it. Right? So <clears throat> to have it ready and there when you do need it, it's a lot better than having to search for it after the fact. And, you know, the more times we experience uh, something like that, the more times we uh, come to appreciate it. Right? So if you come to find something that you, uh, well, when you come to use something and you use it more and more, you come to appreciate it more. Uh, the, the reason I want to get through with this, get to this is that, you know, with a lot of our needs, when it's there, uh, we don't think about it. You know, when you think about air, you know, most of us ha don't have any problem breathing. We don't even think about it. But if you should have emphysema or some other, you know, uh, condition, then you start to really understand how important it is, right? A lot of times we just go through life, we don't think about it because the need is taken care of, right? The need is taken care of, so we don't really think about it. And, uh, you know, we could go on and on and on about all these needs that we have, but because we don't have to think about it, the need is being met. And it's usually only when that need is not met that we start to appreciate that fact. Um, you know, yesterday, the Kumamoto Kenjin Kai was having their memorial service, and I was t telling them a story, I think I might have mentioned it to some of you before, about how uh, early on in my career as a minister, there was this man uh, who was there at the service, and he only had one arm. And during the chanting, they were coming up for the burning of the incense. And the one thing that I was wondering about how he was, what he was going to do or how he was going to do is, how was he going to do gasho, putting his hands together if you only have one arm? You know, so I, I was really curious and I was losing track of where my chanting was and all of that. Luckily, I wasn't the only one there, so it was okay. But as he was coming forward, you know, uh, I, I started getting more and more curious and I wanted to make sure I, I could see. And... This man, he had the most beautiful putting of the hands together that I've ever seen. 
And this may sound strange because he only had one, one arm. You know, he lost his arm in an agricultural accident. So, but he only had one arm. But his hands were together. You could almost swear that both hands were there, right? Most of us tend to get really sloppy when we do it because we have two hands. When we put our hands together, you know, it's like this or cupped, you know, some, sometimes I might be holding notes in my hands and you may never know, but, uh, but you know, we do things like that with, because we just take it for granted, you know, we just do it. But this man, because he only had one arm, he made a conscious effort to make sure that they were both together, right? And it's like the hand of the present and the hand of the past were there together in, you know, in perfect placement, right? Perfect placement. And I started to see, think that, you know, this is part of what we're being told when we're told about, you know, the fact that we come to appreciate something more and more when we come to see, you know, how important it is, how important it is.